The Grand Canyon is one of the seven wonders of the natural world. It truly is incredible. But it is a long drive to get there, and my guess is you probably want to do more than just look into the canyon when you go. We're Matt and Cheryl with We're in the Rockies, so in this video here we're going to give you some other things to do at the Grand Canyon besides just stare into a giant hole. That is the number one thing to do, it is amazing, and you're going to want to do that, but you'll also want to add some variety to your vacation to the Grand Canyon. So the first thing is to walk along the rim of the canyon. So you can walk from one viewpoint to the next. They call it the rim trail. Yes, you're still staring into the, the canyon when you do that, but it's giving you some extra perspective on uh, the depth of the canyon and, and how steep those canyon walls are. They really are amazing. And a rim trail is a really nice activity just to get some different views of the canyon. Our next one is to visit the very charming village of Grand Canyon at the South Rim. Of all the national parks I've been to, this is my very favorite village. I love it, and here's why. In 1901, the Santa Fe Railway Company decided they could, they could turn a nice little profit if they could get people out to the Grand Canyon with their service. So they built a track out there, and then eventually they built a couple of hotels so that people would have a place to stay when they went. So the Grand Canyon Village is pretty old. A lot of the buildings were built in around 1905 very very charming architecture one of the standouts is the hopi house it was built by mary coulter the hopi house has always been designed to be a souvenir shop but they wanted to respect the the puebloan indians that were there before and so they built it after one of their hopi houses and so it's a rectangular building with these little tiny windows designed to keep the sun and the wind out the roof of it like the ceilings are really cool because they use twigs and mud and things like that to make the ceiling the actual railway station that the train still comes into is one of the oldest wooden railway stations in the united states there is also the kolb cabin there were two brothers that that moved out to the Grand Canyon right at the beginning and they were famous for their incredible shots and explorations and their shots were very dangerous. El Tavar is another cool place to go. That's one of the original hotels there that was, you know, the, that was the, the railway wanted built. It was a destination hotel, so very fancy. Um, I have to say that when I first entered the, the lobby of the, ho of the hotel, I, I went out to the car and told Matt, it's old and not in a good way. But as we explored the hotel more and actually ate at the restaurant El Tavar, I give that place two thumbs up. Very, very cool architecture. Really pretty. And we loved our breakfast at El Tavar. It was really nice to kind of have a fine dining experience on our rustic little trip. Vercamps is another cool building. That is the, the longest curio shop that the national parks have ever had. A man named John Vercamp started that very early in the 1900s. The National Park System just barely got it in 2008 and turned it into a visitor center, but it's kind of another charming little building. And then lastly, we have uh, the Bright Angel Lodge, which was also made by Mary Coulter. And it's a lodge and then a lot of little cabins. So lots of kind of just fun things to look at and see as you walk around the Grand Canyon Village. Okay, so the next activity is to do a train ride. So Cheryl mentioned that the train arrives at Grand Canyon Village. It comes from a place called Williams, Arizona, which is about an hour south of the south rim of the Grand Canyon. In the early days of the national parks, one of the challenges was how to get people to the national parks. They tried to advertise them, and then, of course, they're in very remote areas, a lot of the, uh, a lot of the famous ones. And so the railroads had to get people there and they were the ones who built the lodges that uh, Cheryl was talking about, like El Tavar and, and uh, the Bright Angel Lodge. While that was a necessity early on was to take the train and stay in a lodge at the rim, now it's kind of a nostalgic trip to do this and a very popular activity to take the train from Williams, Arizona. So the train departs at 9.30 in the morning and, and then it returns at 5.45 in the afternoon. It costs somewhere between $70 and $200, depending on the type of car that you choose. You can choose from like six different cars to more affordable options to, I believe, riding up above the train and seeing out as you're driving. The ride is kind of through a forested area until you get to the rim. It drops you off right there in the village, and then you can just walk right out to the rim to see the Grand Canyon. Uh, they have some other activities that, that they do, like a shootout, and you can eat there. Give this video a like if you're liking it so that other people can learn about the cool things to do at the Grand Canyon besides stare into it. Our next one is taking a mule ride. Oh my goodness, what a cool experience this was. So 
North Rim and South Rim both offer mule rides and different extents of it. I think when we think about mule rides, we think about riding a mule ride all the way down to the bottom of the canyon. And a lot of us, that sounds terrifying, but that's not how it has to be. There are a lot of different options. So on the South Rim where most people visit, mule rides are offered year round. You can book that mule ride all the way down to the bottom of the canyon, sleep overnight at Phantom Ranch and then pack out. But if that's not what you wanna do, you can also book a two or three hour mule ride that just kind of goes along the rim of the canyon. And on the north rim, the, the National Park Service does not really run those, but they, they contract through a company called Canyon Rides, which we highly recommend. Mm -hmm. We use that company both for our trip to Grand Canyon and to Bryce Canyon. And, and we had a fantastic experience, but we did a simple one hour mule ride kind of through the forest we got to go a little bit along the rim but it wasn't anything scary about like being on the edge on the north rim they do have a three hour ride that will take you into the canyon a little bit but the other two rides that they offer at the north rim are just more kind of through the forest and more scenic but you still get to see the grand canyon a couple of things about the mule rides is weight depending on how long the ride is um, if it's a shorter ride you can weigh up to 220 pounds if it's a longer ride, uh, max weight 200, and that's with all your gear on. And then as far as age restrictions, also depends on the type of ride, but seven to 10 years is the minimum age, depending on the ride. And one of the funny things they tell you about when you ride those mules is they say, no leaning, no screaming. So just kind of keep that in mind if you're riding on a mule, don't lean, don't lean if you think the mule's too far on the edge, and definitely don't scream. Okay, our next thing on the list here is a bicycle ride. So this is a really popular activity and one that we kind of have regret. We weren't able to do the last time. We just didn't quite fit it in, but you can rent bicycles at Bright Angel Bicycles, which is right next to the main visitor center near Mather Point. It is not near Bright Angel Lodge, so make sure to keep that distinction separate. They're a different company. They're just called Bright Angel Bicycles. You can rent them or take a tour. So tours start around 60 bucks per person for an adult and they'll take you out on the Hermit's Rest Road and give you a little tour. Uh, you can also just rent bikes and ride around the village and Hermit's Rest Road if you want to. They, the rentals for an adult starts at $13 an hour. They're $32 for half a day. Really, we would highly recommend this because there are so many bike trails going through the village but we saw people biking all over the place through the village, really a nice activity. Again, the village is up on the rim, is kind of a forested area. So you're biking through trees and forest, and then you kind of pop out to these different viewpoints. I've got the next one. So the next one is rafting the river. Now, you can go down a huge rabbit hole here on rafting the river. And there are, there are trips that go, that you can book for like three days, seven days, 21 days, these big, uh, long, huge white water rafting trips. But if you're just there for a short time, you can go raft the river starting at Lee's Ferry. Now Lee's Ferry is about two hours away from the South Rim. So this is over on the east side of the canyon. This is kind of near Page, Arizona. And there is a company there called Wilderness River Adventures that will take you on. This is not a whitewater rafting trip. This is calm water. And They'll do a half day trip for about $100 per person and it goes around the famous Horseshoe Bend. So the Horseshoe Bend is a really famous overlook down into the, into the canyon. You see the Colorado River. In this case, you can actually see it from below using this river rafting trip. Next is actually hiking into the Grand Canyon. This isn't an all or nothing situation. You don't have to hike all the way down to the bottom, which is a pretty strenuous hike. In fact, the National Park does not recommend you do that in one day. They have this horrible sign that has some guy puking into the river saying, this can happen to you if you do this all in one day. But the good news is, is that you can go on these hikes and just go down as far as you want and then come up. Uh, the two big hikes on the South Rim that people enjoy doing are the Bright Angel Trail and then the South Kaibab Trail. Kaibab. Oh my gosh, I cannot say that word right. The South Kaibab South Trail. <laughs> the South Kaibab Trail. And our favorite was the South Kaibab when we hiked it. But a word of caution, it gets hot if you were there in the summer and the Grand Canyon sunrise is early. 
So if you are not up on that mountain, I'd say by seven o'clock ready to hike down, you're gonna pay. It gets really, really hot. The good news is, is there is water spigots going down through the, through the hikes. There's actually restrooms too, but those are the two hikes that, that are pretty popular on the south rim. But just keep in mind that it starts off going steep downhill and then you have to climb up when you're more hot and more tired. So make sure to really consider your fitness level before you start those hikes. Both these trails uh, go down to the Colorado River and they merge on, just on the other side of the Colorado River where they merge. They become one trail and then they head up to the North Rim. Uh, but again, you can just go down for a little ways and then turn around. Pretty common to go down for about a mile, mile and a half, then turn around. There's a couple of viewpoints there. It does give you a good perspective of how big that canyon is. After hiking down a mile and a half, you feel like you've just barely hiked into the canyon. There's a lot further to go. Okay, the next activity that you can do is an ATV ride or a four-wheeler ride. So we looked into this quite a bit. We didn't end up doing it, but uh, let me just give you a couple of options here. You can rent an ATV from Grand Canyon Rental Adventures. They start at around $400 per person, I believe. And you can actually, they give you some, some routes that you can drive. And one of those is actually out to Grandview Point. So you can drive right out to the canyon. Again, you're at the top of the rim. So a lot of the driving is through the forest. And then you pop out at the rim and look over the Grand Canyon. If you want a guided tour, you could do pink Jeep tours or Grand Canyon Jeep tours. Now these are not your own ATV. You're riding in a Jeep or, or something like that as, as part of a tour group. These start at around $100 a person and they'll take you out to the rim. They do some sunset tours and things like that. So we saw quite a few pink Jeep Yes, Pink Jeep's driving but these look like more sightseeing tours, not adventure tours. They were on yeah. the main roads. It was just kind of to show people around if they didn't want to have to plan their own trip. I do think Grand Canyon Jeep tours gets off road a little bit, but uh, but yes, if you want to do your own ATVing, you know, get your own rental, that's going to cost you a little bit more money. So, yeah. all right. And speaking of spending money, our next idea is helicopter rides. I think this is probably going to be one of the best ways to see the Grand Canyon. Now, we're a family of six, so we didn't do this. Mm -hmm. But after researching it, I I actually feel like the price of a helicopter ride is fairly reasonable for a helicopter ride. Um, the prices, depending on the company you go with, can start at $220 per person and go 400 and up, depending on the, the length of your ride and where you're going. But they also can depart from the Grand Canyon or from Las Vegas. So if you just really don't want to make the drive over to the Grand Canyon, you can still see it. Just go to Vegas, take your helicopter ride, and head on back to Vegas. Now, I don't, I don't think those go right in the National Park. I don't think the National Park allows the helicopters to go through there. So the Grand Canyon is so big that it's actually run by like five or six different entities, including the National Park Service, uh, some Native American tribes, multiple Native American tribes. So. It goes over some of the Grand Canyon, but not like the center part that you're thinking about, right? Okay, next thing that you can do is a ranger program. We really enjoy going to the ranger programs. This is a free tour, basically, when you go to a ranger program. Uh, they'll, they'll post them at the visitor center, the activities that they're doing that day and the times that they're doing them and where. But they have topics that they'll talk about, like geology, the wildlife at the Grand Canyon, uh, stars, star party type shows. So we did this at Bryce Canyon and it was great. We showed up at 10 o'clock and they, they showed us constellations in the sky and taught us all about astronomy and stuff like that. It was really nice, I thought. So keep that in mind to do some ranger programs to vary up your trip. Finally, uh, there are plenty of other nearby attractions that you can do around the Grand Canyon between Las Vegas and Williams and Page and over on the North Rim. You've got uh, Canav and and so much to do. We're going to do a whole nother video on that, so we won't go into it here though. But a lot to do around the Grand Canyon. And if you're planning a trip to the Grand Canyon, and we really hope you are because it is so cool, we've created a trip planner and audio guide just for you. It's incredible. It's going to show you the best sites to see at the Grand Canyon. There's a million lookouts. We'll tell you the best ones to do, the best hikes to go on. We fit some of these fun activities in that are our favorites. And, and then Matt has just the best stories of all the places we visit. He's a history professor for a local university and he really takes a lot of time to find the best stories and then tell them in a fun way that's interesting for anyone, not just 
history nerds like us. So check it out on our website at We're in the Rockies. And if you're interested in just traveling to the West in general or learning stories about the West, subscribe to our channel. We are always covering new places in the West. We appreciate you tuning in and watching.